giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. Moving into Einstein Ron Robin. Um, I think as we just talked about all the divisions, I think one of my most surprising things um, and kind of favorite things, um, and it's not kind of really happened before, is how many like not household names kind of per se were on Einstein. There was a lot of teams here that, um, you know, this year has gotten some decent recognition, but even, even not so. Like we just talked about a lot of teams that we just talked about that made it very far and on Einstein that we have not really talked about at all this year. So it was really cool to see, to see that, um, the epic, uh, 98 to 98, um, tie to start things off yeah. in match one was a uh, pretty energizing kind of for the crowd. And, uh, so just kind of working through the 15 matches there, we would see Archimedes and Darwin take it. Curie, um, would miss it by one point, um, or one, yeah, one championship point. Uh, they would have beaten the Darwin number two alliance um, by far in cargo, um, or just short, and we're just short the one there. Um, <clears throat> so, um, as you had talked about, um, Tyler Daly would go, it says 0 and 5 here. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, and then follow, kind of going um, backwards, and then fifth was Carson, then Tesla, Curie, and then our two. Uh, our two finalists there were Archimedes and Darwin. So I think overall in all, uh, a great set of matches, um, kind of pretty back and forth. Uh, Curie uh, kind of lost a couple there in the middle, but made a, made a strong effort to come back there at the end. But like I said, it was just came up one, one point short. But um, I don't know what you saw, Tyler, Justin, but for me, um, I enjoyed them. I thought it, it was a good hard fought battle by all teams and all alliances and uh, whatever you guys got to say. Yeah, go ahead, I, Justin. Yeah, uh, I kind of watched, uh, as you can imagine, the the seating from uh, for the the round robin was kind of tough. So I just kind of watched from the test of the field. It was nice to just kind of relax or just watch it on the screen. Mm. And there were some good matches. I do think that, and maybe it's from doing this show. Like I, I know I know a lot of the the quote unquote powerhouse teams. I just felt like I kind of I didn't really have a horse in the race. It wasn't really a team that I was really excited to watch. Um, the matches were the matches were fine, but just personally, um, you know, I was. Uh, I was really rooting for um, 11, 14, 20, 56 to come out of Curie. Um, so not being able to watch them. And there were some other great alliances that we had talked about that we had just have just talked about um, through each division that I didn't get to see play. Um, so it was, it, I mean, it was cool to, to root on Archimedes, you know, the field that we were on and the alliance that uh, ended up eliminating us. Um, but I, aside from that, I was just a little disappointed, I think, with the overall um, lack of a, a true powerhouse and alliance that a lot of people could kind of get behind. But take nothing away from the teams that, that earned their way there. Um, the teams that earned their way there played some great matches. Like Mike said, the 98-98 tie to get things started was really exciting, and there was a lot of great matches after that. So um, I'm still, I don't know, maybe it's a, an old and you know an old timer thing. I'm really still not used to the whole Rod Robin format. It still seems kind of kind of foreign to me, but it was fun to watch. Um, and it's a, you know, a decent way to uh, decide who goes to Ford Field when you have six, uh, six fields. Something to me... Uh... You know, Justin, I think you did nail it a little bit. Like, I mean, Mike and I see this. We don't have horses in the race anymore really at all, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and so for me, uh, I had my money on Curie going in. I thought Curie just looked phenomenal. Uh, 1073's defense uh, did not seem as uh, effective as it was uh, – when they went on the Einstein. So I don't know if something changed from them or if the alliance has caught on or something happened like that. Um, you know, we're seeing a lot in the chat that it was one ball, one climb. You know, this, this is almost every single alliance, you know, could yeah. there was a score yeah. change. Like this was very close and there was a mm -hmm. lot of very close things. I mean, so close that there was two tied matches, right? So uh, it, it actually, I, I was happy. I'll tell you one thing though, uh, Justin, I was happy to see was that the last three matches actually mattered. Yeah. And that was nice in a round robin and refreshing because uh, I haven't felt like for the, like, I don't think Houston was that way really. And I don't remember last year at all really being like that. And I could be mistaken, but it was cool to see the last three matches matter. Curie had to win their last match and then hope that Darwin didn't win their last match because they would take the tiebreaker for something like that. Right. So that was uh, absolutely crazy to see. And then you had Tesla who, if they would have won and said, they could have been on, uh, in the finals. Mm -hmm. uh, so very interesting uh, way that that played out. I thought it was uh, the last three matches I thought were incredibly exciting uh, because there was that tension. Um, it felt like more of a traditional bracket style that way because it was just one match uh, and then just, you know, that close to making something like that. Uh, 
Archimedes, uh, I don't, I, I don't know if anybody expected him to go four or on one. I mean, they looked really, really good going in, going in. They're you know obviously winning their division the way they did. Nine thirty was left unchecked most of the time, which I think was a mistake by a lot of alliances. I'm, I was surprised that most alliances didn't go after 930 instead of Celtex. I don't know if that's a name recognition thing or what, because 930 uh, was putting up, I think most of the times, like 14 to 16 game pieces when unchecked. And uh, I didn't count how many Celtex did, but that's that's definitely a lot. So I was surprised more alliances didn't choose to play defense against 930. Uh, you know, we saw some of that, I, I believe, on, on Ford Field. And I think one match, one or two matches, we might have saw some defense against 930, but I was expecting it the whole time. Uh, so that that was quite interesting. But congratulations to Archimedes uh, for going 4 one undefeated uh, on the uh, round robin. Uh, and then Darwin, you know, it, it's easy to say they squeaked in, but they earned their spot, right? Obviously, they're world champions, so they're, they definitely did quite well for that. And like I said, it's always going to be what it could have, should have, right? It could have been so close this way. If this one climb didn't happen this yeah. way, Kiri, Kiri would have won a match prior and it wouldn't have mattered. You know, all that stuff happening. You know what? That makes it exciting to me. When people are looking back, they're like, oh, just that one little thing that could have made the difference. To me, that actually does make exciting matches. Uh, yeah. The 15 matches, I think, does run a little bit long, which is crazy for me to see because I like a lot of matches and I'd like to see more on Ford Field. Uh, but at some point, it's just kind of like, all right, uh, you know, what's happening. I, I do like how they handle, uh, and, and I'm just going to kind of roll in, into the next spot here in just a second. We'll, we'll take a short break, but I do like how the breaks are happening where it's just like they do WFA during one time that we already knew who it was. Uh, and then they did the volunteer of the year award, by the way, he shout out to James Lockman, who, if you're uh, not familiar with, if you are a game announcer, you better be familiar with them because, uh, he created the app that most game announcers uh, use and all should use, uh, and it's been absolutely integral to changing how game announcers uh, announce the game, which I think is super cool. Yeah, I think the round robin, um, like the pacing seems good, right? It's 15 matches; it's a lot, but it um, mm -hmm. it seems to go pretty quickly. No, and, you're right. um, and Houston, I mean, we were at Houston and Detroit, like we said, and they, they both seem the same in that aspect. Um, it does break it up pretty nicely. Um, you know, with some commentary and, and other things in between. So I think the flow of it is, is good. Um, but uh, I guess we'll wait. We're going to do our comments on Kobo as well. Yeah, let's but show we'll wait the... wait till after this, yeah. Yeah, let's show uh, the interview that we did with the Rembrandts, uh, 4481 out of the Netherlands, the pride of Europe. They were the first team uh, from Europe to ever make it on the Einstein uh, and now world champions as well too. So let's take a look at the interview we had with them. Down here in the field of Detroit with team number 4481, the Rembrandts, and here with Yost, uh, one of the drive crew members. Absolutely phenomenal performance from you guys. You guys are the first team in Europe uh, to get on the Einstein, and of course, you're the first one to win it now as well, too. Uh, just tell me about some of the journey along the way with your season here so far. So we played two regionals, or one, two, week two, one and a week two event. And uh, yeah, we did really well. We ended up two times in the semifinals. And uh, now then we went to Worlds because of uh, engineering inspiration. And now we won Worlds, so it's really crazy. And uh, looking at uh, your performance, you guys were an absolutely defensive powerhouse, yeah. but a great robot as well. But tell me about some of your alliance partners. What do they bring to the table to help you win? So uh, at the beginning, we uh, we came to the conclusion that we needed to play defense. And our alliance partner to 17, uh, and 3707, uh, they g just go full offensive and try to uh, lock the defend defender to 217 because they have a really strong drive chain, so, so they drive just through it, through it. And then we can get as much points as we want and then just play defense as hell. That's well, congratulations on an absolutely huge win. I know all of Europe is cheering for you. The entire yeah. world is cheering for you. Great job by the Red Brands. Can't wait to see you guys in future years. <laughs> absolutely phenomenal yeah, machine. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Nick. Congratulations. Yeah. So 4481, uh, congratulations to them. Uh, Rembrandt is a team I've been a big fan of a long time. Uh, we've seen their uh, videos on Premier Night. Um, well, not this year, but all other years. Uh, they definitely trained a lot of heads for that. And, you know, I think this year uh, the robot didn't qualify. They qualified via EI. And to see them come through uh, and become world champions, uh, very happy and, and very proud for them. Uh, big shout out uh, to Wooter over in the uh, Netherlands. Congratulations, man. I'm so happy for you. Mm -hmm. Great. For sure. I'm pretty sure 
Um, so I guess they went to South Florida last year and 125 was there. I'm pretty sure uh, that B-roll footage there, they were cheering. They have a cheer for 125. Still. Yeah. Like uh-huh. they, they're so like, they just had such a great time with the Neutrons in South Florida and uh, they're just really great friends still. So that was you're right. They were doing a 125 cheer, the audio for that. I was very confused on <laughs> yeah. that. Uh, was so like, good, you know, it was used yeah. for B-roll, but maybe we should, uh, I'll, we'll have to send Christine that. Yeah. Uh, That's because it's pretty funny. That's, funny. That's yeah. awesome. Um, so I kind of I kind of jumped ahead a little bit. So I, I said some comments on Kobo. I, I guess I could have yeah. a little more. But Justin, what are what are your thoughts on uh, on just Kobo in general, the round robin, or whatever it may be? Uh, just in general, and, I, and I'm I'm not trying to sound particularly negative in the show, and I feel like I have been a little bit. It just I'll say again, it just doesn't feel like a championship. And I maybe the people that uh, or the students and mentors and teams that are new and never experienced St. Louis or uh, or Atlanta before that. Uh, maybe they feel like it's great. I just, I don't know. It feels like an oversized regional to me. And take nothing away from, like, I guess, first staff and volunteers. The volunteers were phenomenal. Uh, our head referee, I'll just do a court, uh, shorter story. We got a red card in our third match for throwing a hatch. Um, we weren't happy about it, uh, obviously. Um, our driver went to the question box and uh, stated this case. Uh, the head referee said he would review it, which kind of, to me, was like, yeah, well, that's the end of that. Um but probably an hour later, he came to our pit, um, found our driver, talked to him about it, really tried to understand his side of the story about what happened. Um, said he would get back to him after lunch. During lunch, the head referee reviewed the call further, talked to our driver after lunch returned, removed the red card, and was oh. just incredibly gracious. And just he took that much time. You know, he's a, obviously a busy guy. Um, you know, hundreds of matches had to be played. He really took the time to understand, you know, our perspective reviewed it um, and evidently, or, and eventually reversed the call, which I had never heard um, a head ref doing that or a call being reversed. Uh, so I was just really, and, and I got the opportunity to thank him for um, just showing that level of professionalism uh, at the time. That was really, really nice to see. So we had a lot, you know, in our communities in general, we had um, a great field staff and we had great staff at the, um, the practice field and everything was awesome. It just didn't have that feel like, Wow, this is the the world championship. It just kind of felt like a an oversized regional, but yeah. maybe that's just an old guy talking. I don't know. So a couple, a couple things to add in, um, Justin. I, I think even if they didn't overturn the red call, but the fact that he took the time to uh, listen and talk to you, I think I think speaks miles, right, for something like that. Yeah. Um, I do want to call uh, Parth in chat. Uh, says that loading went super smooth this year. I did hear that from many teams yeah, this yep, year. That definitely loading was, was great. Really good. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, and I heard that like teams that tried to like cut in line with their buses were like sent back and that sort of thing. And I think that's amazing. So, <laughs> uh, but uh, Cobalt overall, uh, I like the venue. Uh, like, let, let's let's just assume that it has to be that way. I agree with you, Justin. I, I being in the stadium, I think provides that epic feel. It's championships. It is neat to look down and see the six divisions like in a row. But on the other hand. Uh, you know, when you go to Ford Field, what a what a much more epic feeling I felt so for something. So much more. <laughs> uh, so, and we'll get the Ford Field in just a little bit. And it'll be quick because I know we're running um, we're running over on time. Uh, but uh, I like I do like Cobra Raw. I like the dynamics of like kind of this multi tiered thing, and it felt like it felt a bit more epic once you got out of the fields area, right? And once you actually got into the main concourse area, and you looked, you know, you looked down on the first floor, and there's this big catering thing down there, and you went to the Innovation Fair, which I thought was a little bit. Uh, better place and seemed like it had more foot traffic for things than what uh, Houston did. Uh, you know, between the two convention centers, I like both of them. Uh, Detroit in general, I thought did a fantastic job in accommodating. I mean, the people mover got nuts uh, trying to go over on Thursday. Uh, but with that said, multiple places for food trucks like Houston did too, which was great. Uh, I think both cities have been very accommodating uh, for first. And I'm happy to see that because it hasn't always been the case that way. And so that's something I'm very happy with. Uh, but Cobalt Co- in general, uh, I think, I think overall it went well for what it is. If we have to be in a convention center like that, I thought they did a great job. Yeah. And I think, um, going back to back, we can really compare the two. It, it is, it is so similar between, uh, the GRB in Houston and Cobo in Detroit. Um, the very, very similar feel in the convention center itself. That being said, uh, GRB has the extended seating um, uh, and on the two oh, Einstein fields, so it, it can point. it can fit fit more people. It's just it's just it's just sad. I feel like it, that you know you come all this way, you've paid all this money, you're here, and you're watching the round robin. Like Justin just said, you're watching the round robin on a screen that still is kind of far away. Depends on where you are, and you can't see that well. You know, yeah. it's just. 
it's just not it, it just doesn't feel like world championships and now we're stuck and you know with with the passes and stuff that we have you know Tyler, Justin, and I, and others are allowed to to go places others aren't. So I always try to look look for how the teams the teams are. And I know the the chat is talking kind of about the bathrooms and stuff. And you know we we have access to other bathrooms. And the times that we did use the ones, I just feel bad. You know, like I feel it's just it's a lot. And I don't think it, it's it doesn't have that feel like we said. But this is this is what it is. And I think first has done a good job making the best of what they've created like you know i i don't i can't really think of anything else that could be done better given the location and the layout and everything um you know it does get a little congested um like when you're cutting in between the fields on those walkways if, if teams are coming or going but um but yeah i think it, it it does um i think it does the best for the situation that's mm -hmm. about it so yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that being what, said, what the acronym? Uh, we won't say what it means, but Dan, all right, Dan, Nick, <laughs> just saying. So, <laughs> let's, let's, sorry, go ahead. All right, let's let's move on uh, to uh, Einstein uh, here. We'll we'll be pretty brief, succinct, because we I think we talked pretty ad nauseum about the uh, uh, two winners. Uh, man, I will tell you, I thought finals was absolutely epic. Uh, Archimedes taking the first match by just a few points, and then you see, uh, man, Darwin, right? Yeah, Darwin coming back and taking match two, and then. Match three, the end of match three. And Nick, I don't know if you can play the end of final three. I'd appreciate it because uh, the end of that where it was just neck and neck. And then you have mm -hmm. the climb at the end where we're not sure. Mike and I are sitting in the stands. I have a camcorder in hand zooming in to try to see like who landed where. I don't know okay. if you remember this, Mike. But, yeah. um, but like we're just trying to zoom in to see like where are the bumpers lying? Like where is it like that? Like that was absolutely uh and both teams are like arm in arm like ready yeah. to like celebrate and like you just don't know and it's always this is the other side point where like some refs and matches the climbs get put in first but then other matches they're not in and then it's like you know so you have no you have literally no idea who's gonna win it was that close you know but, well and, and and you had uh you know teams tipping over and that sort yeah. of thing so <laughs> like i mean this this match literally the last like 30 seconds was just back and forth and heart-wrenching and you're just like oh my yeah. god what happened? What's going to happen? You see the 930 robot there. Uh, and I don't think it could have ended any better. I mean, obviously, if you're Archimedes, you wish it ended better. But as a spectator uh, for that, I, I thought that was beyond exciting and beyond awesome to see. And, and huge congratulations to Darwin uh, for taking it. I don't think there's much more to say. We'll, we'll have the uh, uh, 217 and the uh, uh, 3707 interview in just a little bit. Uh, and they explain, I think, a lot more. Uh, but I thought it was just I thought it was just absolutely cool to see. Uh, for that anybody else have comments before we move on uh no i mean if there's some of the things we said last year in in order to justify the rental fee of ford field of minute maid park it has to be long like you can't go over there for an hour and a half like you're over there for two and a half three hours because like why you got to justify the rental fee somehow and it just by that point you're we're going on like after a 13, gene speech it was like four and a half so <laughs> yeah i mean you're going on like a 13 hour day of just like from when um from when activities start at at uh, Kobo to when they end not even like when teams were awake and on their way you know so it's just such a long day but yeah. uh but yeah i mean it was really exciting uh ftc matches were great as well seeing uh, that's that's for another show but that was a whole another animal to tackle gluten free and all that too <laughs> you but... watch tomorrow we'll talk about that yeah that's right so cool justin any comments from you on the ford field yeah uh, <laughs> about the ma about the matches in general. The matches were awesome, like you just said. Uh, the final, the final, final match. Robots stepping over. The matches were awesome, um, and it was. And the reason why I knew they were awesome is because as I was sitting there for hours <laughs> waiting for the the FRC matches, when they finally happened, I was excited to watch, and we weren't let down. We saw some great matches. Um, so I have, you know, I have nothing but uh, positive. Um, things to say about the the two alliances that went at it. Um, they were just they were really fun to watch. Yeah. So real quick before we uh, move on to just general four field and the rest of the train, we'll wrap up and then hit the FRC top twenty five. Uh, let's take a look uh, at an interview we sat down uh, or stand down in the field with uh, Team Two Seventeen World Champions, the Thunder Chickens. 
Down here in field, team number two, 17, the Thunder Chickens, now Detroit world champions. The world champions, once again, what an incredible team, an incredible run. Jacob, uh, as we look through, obviously, some very tough matches as you led your way here onto the Einstein finals. Uh, but going in the finals three, you guys had to kind of reiterate from finals two. What changed in that? What led you to the victory? So after last year, we figured that changing things up was a good idea. And last year, we tried that, but our robot died on us, so we didn't really know. So we tried it again this year. All our robots worked. That was, that was the idea. Speaking about all the other robots, tell me about some of your alliance partners. What do they bring to the table? What led you to the victory that way? So our defense bot, amazing defense. Stopped their top score, slowed them down as much as they could. We slowed down their climbing bot at, on our side of the field so they couldn't get their second climb. That also helped us. Well, congratulations on a huge victory. Thunder Chickens, world champions here in Detroit. Congratulations. So congrats again to Thunder Chickens, uh, and thanks for taking the time to uh, speak with us as well. So uh, before we wrap up, and of course we'll show 3707 in just a moment, uh, I just want to get uh, just general last impressions about Ford Field, about Detroit, uh, just general thoughts about that. Justin, you want to start out? Yeah, it's a great venue. Um, like like you had mentioned a couple of times, just walking in there, if I, it, that's where you finally got the championship feel, and it was really cool to see. Uh, we were in the, the second level, so seeing all the teams below us and all the teams behind us and kind of everyone there uh for the the final party was was really cool um i would just i would love to find i know the logistics would be maybe a nightmare i would love to find the find uh i would love for them to find a way to do the round robin on ford field um mm -hmm. just some more frc matches in that venue would be um would be for the for the best it's a it is a great venue and i you know enjoy the matches i definitely think there's room i mean they only had two like small pit stalls it felt like or just a small area for the two alliances and then just to add four more I definitely think there's room for it um, i think i think the issue is the logistics and moving all the teams over though yeah i think that because especially uh at for detroit where you have to take a vehicle like you could like i know houston you can get away with walking that it's not very far right but yeah. at detroit that's it's a mile plus away right so you have to that's a logistical nightmare to get everybody. I mean, yeah, they had like six sprinter vans just for two. Alliance, yeah, which was pr like pretty that. cool, by the way. I do love seeing yeah. those show up and unload. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, Mike. Did you have anything else? I didn't want to cut you no, off. No, that's it. That's it. Um, so the last thing I just want to say, yeah, I think Ford Field was fantastic. Uh, the viewpoint for the teams, I think, was amazing. Um, they got a great, great viewpoint of it, especially compared to Minute Maid Park. I think I, I don't know if anybody who's been to both, I don't know how you could ever say that Ford Field is, is not as good as uh, Minute Maid because Ford Field blows Minute Maid away, and I hope that they make changes to Minute Maid in the future. Um, in regards to, I will say the other half, though, is that the non-robot stuff, I think, went better at Minute Maid. Uh, that was my impression, my feeling. I thought the ballpark actually gave a great impression, like the fireworks they did at the end and kind of the open roof at the end, I thought was a cool way to end the night. And Detroit actually felt quite anticlimactic to me uh, near the end, where it's just like, all right, we're done, good night, sort of thing for the most part, uh, versus well, Minute Man, I thought did quite a bit more uh, to kind of celebrate the end part. And it's tough because it's the same same Dean speech, and then they also oh. then showed the, the Star Wars thing too. So, yeah. Yeah. so for those that were either watched uh, Houston, or we're there. I mean, it's like it makes it that much longer because you've already heard. You know, you've already. This is nothing new. So, uh, I'm not sure. Which right, you have so, to believe. Seventy percent of the people there watched Houston. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I mean, know. I know there's some that didn't because we posted a uh, thing in there, um, like for the congrats, and somebody posted. Oh, they also uh, announced a new game for next year. It's like, hmm. Thanks for proving first. <laughs> point. Appreciate that, buddy. True. Uh, all right, so with that said, uh, we're going to wrap up here uh, as we start to transition to the FRC Top 25. Let's take a look at our interview with world champions, Brian Tetno Dogs. Down here on the field, team number 3707, world champions here, Brian Tetno Dogs. Holy cow, what an absolutely incredible run that you made here in Detroit. So obviously, one is really big, but I just want to kind of hear about what was some of the insight and the strategy you guys had in taking Einstein here today. So we, we knew that uh, the Thunder Chickens were great at placing cargo, especially under our hatches, especially under defense, and we're great at placing cargo. So working with them in order to get uh, bottoms of the rockets filled and the cargo ships filled was super vital. And then having our defense spot 
go down and pick on a really good scoring bot and try to stop their climb was uh, was what, what helped win us the match. So yeah, you look at uh, match number one, you go down a little bit, match number two, you take that. So as you come into match number three, did anything change or is it just play the same game, let's just go for the win? So we actually, we uh, looked back at match finish number two, saw what worked well and decided that when we crossed the field over and the defense bot had to chase us, we were placing a lot of, uh, a lot of game pieces in that time. So we decided to try and do that whenever we got bogged down. Well, congratulations, world champions. Got to feel great. Great job today, man. Thank you very much. So huge congrats, uh, by the way, to uh, Brian Tetno Dogs and the entire alliance for being world champions. Of course, congrats to the finals as well. I got to give a special shout out uh, to 930 being from Wisconsin. Awesome to see another team uh, make it. Uh, I had that opportunity and on 2026 and 2015. And, you know, it's always disappointing to lose in the finals, but you got to be just ecstatic to be there in the first place. So congratulations to both the Archimedes and Darwin alliances uh, for putting on an absolutely spectacular show in the finals. And that's going to kind of wrap us up uh, for uh detroit i think guys um, i think so so we do, last we, hang on we so. do, i think we do want to give a shout out to 1816 yes i thank uh, you yeah. yep the green machine for uh getting in the hall of fame uh, they're incredible uh i don't know them too well but just you know we've been in the chairman's game for for a while um and 1816 is an incredible program and they're just a, an awesome uh, an awesome team and we're uh, very happy to see them uh get into the hall of fame yeah and, and i've known 1816 for a long time um I'm seeing the Minnesota regionals a few years ago. And I have, uh, you know, I, I have uh, somebody that I was on uh, my high school team 93 with Matt Mittag, uh, who is um, now a mentor on that team. So big shout out to him. Uh, and of course, uh, everybody else, everybody else, Mark Lawrence and Yoji and uh, uh, Lori and everybody else who's on that team. Huge congrats to you. Cause I know how long you've all worked your butts off to get there. And if I missed your name, I'm sorry about that. Um, but uh, awesome to see when, when I saw their chairman's finalists second year in a row, I'm like, all right, it's them. It's gotta be that. Uh, and so, so happy for them. I, you know, I, I got a chance to uh, hug and, and shake hands with a couple people uh, and Susan Lawrence as well too. I want to mention, uh, and just so cool to see just everybody who's like, even if they're not currently active with that team, that at some point they were part of that. And it was really great to see uh, some people that I've known for a long time, get to share in that amazing moment. For sure. Cool deal. We need your help to keep fun loud, live and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live and independent.